going to get into section two with an introduction to polynomial functions. In the last section, we studied uh, quadratic functions. That's a specific type of polynomial function. We'll look at them in more general terms and some of the behavior of the functions with respect to the way the graph and uh, the graph looks and things having to do with continuity, things having to do with if the, the, uh, the graph is a smooth curve, and also looking at such things as symmetry and end behavior. Uh, first, the definition though. Let n be a whole number, and let a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, all the way up to a sub n be real numbers where a sub n is not equal to 0. Then the function denoted by f of x equals a sub n x sub n, x to the n, excuse me, plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1, plus a sub n minus 2 x to the n minus 2, all the way down to and so on to a uh, sub 2 x squared plus a sub 1 x to the first, plus a sub 0, the constant term, is called a polynomial function of degree n. The key here in some ways is this first term or the lead term or the leading term. Okay, this is called the leading coefficient and n is called the degree of the polynomial. It's the highest power of x. So I have three uh, simple examples here. This uh, is considered a polynomial function. Uh, even though it doesn't have the variable x there, it's considered like x to the zero. It's referred to as a constant or a constant linear function. And we say the degree is zero because again, if we put the variable in and wrote uh, to the zero power, this is of course just one and 10 times one is one, so we call that degree zero. We don't normally write that in, math nerds will tease us. And then f, uh, g of x is equal to two x minus one. We looked at these, these are linear uh, uh, functions that we uh, talked about before when we were doing graphing of lines. Degree one, because x is to the first power here. And this is what we had in section 2.1, where we had quadratic functions, where we have x to the second power. And this is referred to as degree two. If you have a polynomial function, of uh, degree three, we call that a cubic uh, function. A degree four is a quartic function. There's all sorts of names. Degree five is quintic. I didn't list them all out. You can Google that if you want. But the domain for any polynomial function are all real numbers. Now I have four examples of graphs here, and I wrote down the two words continuous and smooth. Continuous is, in math means pretty much what continuous means in everyday life. There aren't any breaks or skips or jumps that it's straight through. And continuous wise, a function is continuous if we can graph it without picking up the point of our pencil. So you see this first example here, this is continuous. I can draw this without pick, picking up my pencil point. This is continuous. I can draw this without picking up my pencil point, but all of a sudden I've got a problem here. This is no longer continuous. Because to go from this branch to this branch, I'd have to pick up my pencil. You can see there's a break. There's a vertical asymptote. This is the reciprocal, or a version of the, uh, the parent graph of the reciprocal function. And then it's actually its opposite. And then here, we have what looks kind of like a multi-ruled function. There's a, there's a hole, there's a break here. So this is not continuous. So these two are continuous, these two are not continuous, okay, as, as a function. And then smooth, well, you kind of know what it means when you're smooth. There's no sharp edges. So this is a nice smooth curve does well with the, with the lady curves, I guess. And then this guy here, this guy's not smooth because he has a corner point, or a cusp in math. We, we sometimes refer to it that way. So even though this is continuous, this one is not a smooth function. Now here we have smooth, but it's not continuous because of the break. And then here, we have a point here, it's almost like an end point, it stops right here. This is not smooth, there's a break there. And there's a hole here, which is kind of a problem as well. So neither uh, smooth nor continuous. These are two adjectives that we use when we're describing polynomial functions and other types of functions. For polynomial functions, all polynomial functions are continuous. All polynomial functions are smooth, unless, of course, we do some kind of weird restriction to the domain. Now, the easiest type uh, or the most basic types of polynomial functions are what we call the power functions. And the power functions fit the form f of x equals ax to the n, where a is a real number and n is a natural number. Okay? So in this case, remember uh, your, uh, uh, well, yeah, you see, if we, if we I, I have natural, if we let that be zero, uh, because zero is not a natural number, then again, we don't really have 
a traditional power function, I think it's more of a trivial case. But what happens when these situations arise? What happens when, for example, our degree, remember that's the exponent for the variable, is even, or when the degree is odd? And what happens if our coefficient here for our x to the n, sometimes referred to as a lead or leading coefficient, is positive or negative? Well, this is going to be really, really, really rough. But what happens here is n is even, a is, po is positive. Our graph is going to look most likely, depending on what n is, is going to look most likely like something along these ways. Okay, we have a nice smooth continuous curve. But notice here that on the ends, they both are going upward because A is positive. Now, it might have actually a little bit more loops in there depending on the degree, but that's the idea. Or think of our, our uh, quadratic functions. Remember how it, uh, if A was positive, it opened upward like that. If A was negative, it opened downward. Where here, N is even and A is negative. Well, that looks more like perhaps this guy over here where we have... maybe some kind of a curve that does something like this. And again, these are actually examples of what are called quartics, but I just wanted something even and to show you what happens when that leak coefficient is positive or negative. You can see here, my ends are going down, whereas here they're arising, okay? Here they're going to infinity, here they're going to negative infinity. What about if n is odd, like a cubic, or even a linear, and a is positive? Well, you might get something that looks along the lines of this. Now, again, I'm, I'm drawing these really, really, really roughly, and I should have had this going through 0, 0 because it's a power function, but it would look something maybe like this, where it's going upward on one side, downward on the other side. Here, when A is positive, it goes up and to the right. It goes down and to the left. Just the other way around, when n is odd and a is, uh, is negative, you're going to get a graph that's going to more, more, more than likely look something like this. Now again, it could have other little parts to the graph. I'm just drawing what are apparently cubic uh, polynomial functions there, degree 3. But you can see as it goes down and to the right and up and to the left. What happens on the ends is referred to as end behavior, and we use the lead coefficient to show that. This is how we write it. Notice here, as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. So we say, as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. And you can see here, as x gets smaller, y is getting bigger. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. Just the opposite here, as x approaches infinity, as it goes out this way, you can see it goes down that way. So we say y goes to negative infinity. Now, they don't always use y. Sometimes they'll call it f of x or g of x if they give you a specific function. And as x goes to negative infinity, as we go to the left, this is still dropping down. So y is still going to negative infinity. This is how we describe what we call n behavior. We use the leading coefficient and the degree the leading coefficient and the degree. Here, as you can see, uh, if n is odd and a is positive, as it goes to the right, it goes up. So as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. It goes to infinity. And you can see here, as x gets smaller, y gets smaller. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Knowing something about the ends of your curve are uh, pretty important, especially when you're sketching. And then last but not least here, if n is an odd uh, uh, number and a is negative, so we might get a graph that looks like this. Can you see as x gets bigger, y gets smaller? And as x gets smaller, y gets bigger. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. And this is how we list out what we call n behavior. Now I have done this with what we call the power functions. Here's a couple of polynomial functions to look at as examples. And again, it's all based on the leading coefficient and the degree. So we find the highest degree term in each one of these. And we use the highest degree term to determine exactly what's going on here. See, I have degree 4. So that means it's even. So it's either this case or it's this case. And can you see that my a, my lead coefficient, is negative. So it is even 
and my lead coefficient is negative, this would be my, how we determine the end behavior. As x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. So you have a graph maybe that looks something like this. Now this one, it's written in factored form. So you look at that and you say, well, what, what's, my, what's my lead coefficient? What's my leading term? Well, the x is being raised to the fourth, the x is being squared, and this is x to the first power. So that's four, two, seven factors. My leading term, if I multiply this all out and expand it, is going to be x to the seventh power as far as the highest power of the variable. The coefficient, you have a three, uh, six sevenths here. This is a one, so one to the fourth. It's going to stay a one. It's going to stay a one. But here I have one factor of three. So I have six sevenths times three is 18 sevenths. Now, if you don't trust me, you can go ahead and multiply all that stuff out. But that's going to be my leading term. That's going to be my lead coefficient and my degree. So my uh, degree is odd and my lead coefficient is positive, this is how I'm going to describe my end behavior. I'm going to say as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Now these would be really good problems then after you've done this to get your graphing calculator out, uh, graph them on your graphing calculator and see if the graph, your sketch on your calculator, matches up with the results that you have here that you uh, use from the, lead, the leading term.